Let us set some expectations immediately, everyone. No, this is not a fishing guide containing a step-by-step process of all things fish or fish-related crafts. And yes, we will be ignoring ocean fish entirely, as they are literally not going to matter in the context of this video, and probably never will when it comes to fishing. But, what is the context of this video, Beard? Well, it's a crockpot guide almost, folks. Something we haven't had in over a year and I think it time for a new one. For you see, our coverage of all these recipes is spread across three to four different videos because fishing keeps changing. And there are enough of them now to warrant one final showcase containing each dish. So here we are. Plus, this just allows me to once again shout to the masses about how bloody amazing fishing is. So bear with me here. As yes, while this isn't a fishing guide, I am still going to blitz through what you need to know. Like how you'll be needing a fishing rod, of course. Two twigs and two silk is dirt cheap, as each rod can catch nine fish each. And some words of advice about said fish catching. Do so in green ponds come dusk or night to avoid dealing with the frog. Frogs hopping about, fish in the swamp during the day in purple ponds to avoid mosquitoes and such, fish in the blue ponds of the caves to not only have access to fish all year round, but also net eels instead, which are better in fish value. And finally, note that the Oasis Lake can provide fish as well, but during summer alone. And most every pod is home to 10 fish each, and said fish respawn in a mere two minutes. So get to it. And for for a couple dishes here today, we'll also be needing some fish that don't come from ponds. So yes, a sea fishing rod will still be what you want to get them. A single board and six silk is also not bad at all, especially considering that a sea fishing rod lasts forever. But we ain't after ocean fish, everyone. We want lobsters. And thankfully, we don't even have to leave the mainland to get them, or have a lure or bait, which makes everything better. But more on them in a bit. But yes, folks, some fish dishes do require some loot out there on the ocean. So we must make some quick notes there. Kelp will be some of that loot, so be sure to head on to the shallower coastal oceans to find, pick, uproot, or even push them closer to land if you wish. Or better yet, find the Lunar Island to pick up bull kelp stalks for kelp and a means of transplanting them once again. But learn more if you need to here. And lastly, barnacles. Some of the newest additions to the fish family of foods overall, and what we'll be needing for a set of fishy crockpot dishes later, of course. They come from seaweeds, who are found in the rough oceans, who are also incredibly dangerous. Probably the most dangerous horde-type mob in the entire game. Well, except at night, or to Wormwood, of course. Find some, craft a razor, wait till night, and harvest three barnacles per seaweed. Good stuff. And renewable. But yes, with all that out of the way and the basics down, I hope, it's foodies time, folks. Starting with some really good and super easy ones as well, like fish sticks here. Requiring at least one fish and one twig, we can fill the rest with veggies, berries, other fruits, meats, you name it, for 37.5 hunger, 5 sanity, and 40 health of frickin' pop. And my goodness, we're already off to the races with dish one here. But do note too, fish sticks are required to adopt Kitty Kit from the rock den. But oh boy, does it get better still. So, so much better, mind you. A fish value of one and a half, combined with a meat value of two and a half, that's one of the most legendary dishes in all of Don't Starve history. Surf and turf. We can make this and don't starve together with three regular fish and a monster meat, or just throw in one fish, one eel, and two monster meat instead. It's going to be your choice, of course, but enjoy nearly 40 hunger, 33 sanity, and 60 health each munch. Just incredible. And easy to make, too. Just like seafood gumbo as well. Yet another staple of Don't Starve Shipwrecked, seafood gumbo, will always require at least one eel in Don't Starve Together in order to be whipped together. So make note there. For regular fish, we'll simply make meatballs as their fish value is too low, mind you. But manage to make it for 37.5 hunger, 20 sanity, and 40 health to slurp. 
I mean, it's almost not even fair to other food sources at this point, and we're three frickin' dishes in. And heck, even the lessers of the bunch still have worth, folks. Take ceviche, for example. Eels are available during winter via cave fishing, of course, while ice is just gonna be bloody everywhere come that time as well. So toss two and two together, or even just one ice and another filler, for 25 hunger, 5 sanity, and 20 health. So fish guts, even they're good for Pete's sake. That said, not all the fish dishes are winners at the end of the day, and if any fish dish could be ignored, it'd be unagi here. Requiring at least one eel, and one lichen found in the wilds of the caves, all we get from it is 18.75 hunger, 5 sanity, and 20 health a pop. Don't get me wrong, it's actually not bad if you are desperate down there in the caves, but it fails in comparison to what eel can go into instead, obviously. But before we get into more specific recipes here, there is one last simple one that remains. Fish tacos. No matter what, the dish will require at least one fish and one corn. But certain fillers could also turn it into three separate dishes. So stick to two twigs, I'd say. And yeah, you'll have to have farmed the corn. But hey, if you want some consistent stats and you're a farmer slash fisher, 37.5 hunger, 5 sanity, and 20 health is not bad. I say go for it. But now, the reason for that sea fishing rod, folks. Catching lobsters is easy, efficient, and rewarding, as but one, plus some ice and twigs, can lead to lobster, or lobster in the case of don't starve together for whatever reason, bisque. 25 hunger, 10 sanity, and 60 whopping health for just one whopster for Pete's sake. The things are bloody everywhere, so just run your shores and get to catching them. And yes, while lobster dinner here is technically better at 37.5 hunger, 50 sanity, and 60 health, it also requires a stick of butter. And as we know, butter ain't easy to come by, even with a butterfly farm for Pete's sake. So I would say, stick to bisque and then have a lobster dinner every now and then as a treat. Ah, but now we enter the kelp territory, everyone. California rolls have also landed on the beaches of Don't Starve Together from Shipwrecked and offer us nearly 40 hunger, 10 sanity, and 20 health a munch at the cost of two fish and two kelp fronds alone. Now I know my crockpot ain't exactly saying that that's gonna work, but trust me, it does, so enjoy it. And now for a twofer. A dish that requires both kelp, and our last special ingredient of the day, barnacles, everyone. Barnacle nigiri also needs at least one egg as well, so it is definitely one of the stingiest of the recipes in this video. But we'll still offer 37.5 hunger, 5 sanity, and 40 health a munch, so there's that. Barnacles also go into stuffed fish heads, which are honestly quite insane. I forgot how good they were. But two fish and two barnacles for 75 hunger, zero sanity, and 20 health a pop? My gosh, fishing is just too good and not enough people say so. And heck, we can just drop veggies from that previous dish and suddenly we're gonna have barnacle linguine with its 75 hunger as well, but 20 sanity and 10 health instead. So it's your choice. And finally, barnacle pitas, everyone. Requiring one barnacle and one veggie, we can enjoy 37.5 hunger, 5 sanity, and 20 health a much. Great stuff all around. But it's not the final fish dish, folks. Warley offers us fish gourdon blue with its 37.5 hunger, minus 10 sanity, and 20 health each, along with the added bonus of wiping out our wetness when we eat it. But not only that, it prevents us from getting wet for five minutes as well, all for only two fish and two frog legs. Kinda nuts. But the true last fish dish of the day is yet another Wally exclusive, Mokeka. It is also another dish with a very specific recipe overall, with an onion and tomato being required, but managed to make it for 112.5 hunger, 33 sanity, and 60 health each slurp. Good stuff. And you know, I'm starting to think people just don't know how good fishing is. And there you have it, everyone. A collection of every fish dish in the game, all in one, because I feel that way, and wanted to show you stuff. 
Plus, I threw in a quick rundown of just how easy it is to go about doing all this. Seriously, I hate saying this phrase for anything. But fishing and Don't Starve Together is probably OP. But if anything, I hope folks just have a new appreciation for it. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Reel them in. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.